with the water glass ready. In here, I'm about to create a chemical that will completely change my state of mind. Oh, that's strong, okay. Have you ever wondered what carbon dioxide actually tastes like? Not when it's dissolved in water or in a drink like this, but as a pure gas. Well, I wanted to find out, so I tried to create a sort of apparatus to allow me to taste CO2. So here are the materials I used. A beaker filled with concentrated hydrochloric acid, some baking soda, of course, a little wash glass here, and also a glass Coke bottle. The idea is pretty simple. Baking soda is actually sodium bicarbonate. The bicarbonate ion reacts with acids, which provide a source of protons, to form carbonic acid. In aqueous solution, carbonic acid quickly decomposes into water and carbon dioxide, which evolves out of the solution as bubbles. So what I needed to do was react the HCl and the baking soda in the beaker and then quickly cover it with a watch glass to minimize the loss of CO2. Then I would tip the beaker over the Coke bottle to essentially pour the CO2 into the bottle, being careful not to accidentally pour any acid. Once most of the CO2 had been poured into the bottle, I would cover the top of the bottle as quickly as I can with my thumb. Now we filled that up. Ooh, I can already smell it here. Wow, well, that's strong. All right, let's see what we got in this bottle. And then proceed to chug the gas, ideally giving me a taste of pure CO2. Just made my mouth kind of dry. Don't really feel anything special there. So since I was able to get more of a smell than a taste, I figured instead I would just try to smell carbon dioxide. So now, let's dump in some baking soda again. With the wash glass ready. Oh. That's strong, okay. <coughs> Never, ever do what I just did here. Putting chemicals directly under your nose to smell them can be very dangerous and, in some cases, even fatal. The only reasons I am not dead are, one, I quickly turned away after a single whiff, and two, the vapors I inhaled consisted mainly of CO2 and HCl. Now, HCl, being a strong acid, is very corrosive, and CO2 exposure in high concentrations can lead to suffocation, but neither can cause immediate death. However, there are other chemicals where a single whiff can be enough to kill you, and with chemical reactions you can't always be certain of what chemicals you've created. With reactions that produce gases or involve volatile liquids, it is usually best practice to run them under a fume hood and never smell the products. In the lab, however, there are some cases where you would need to smell the chemicals. In those cases, the proper way to smell them is by wafting. Here I'll demonstrate what that looks like. First, you should always have personal protective equipment or PPE on, which at minimum should include goggles, gloves, and a lab coat. Then, to smell your chemicals, you want to hold the container up at least 6 inches from your face, then move your hand over the top of the container, and then towards your nose. This way, you're basically moving a few of the vapors in your direction and only smelling a fractional amount of the chemicals instead of getting a full whiff. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oof. That was... Oof. That burned. That burned quite a bit. 
<coughs> Repeat after me. I will not, I will not directly smell, directly smell any chemicals, any chemicals under any circumstances, under any circumstances. If an odor must be determined, if an odor must be determined, I will waft, I will waft the vapors, the vapors at a safe distance, at a safe distance. So help me God, Allah Akbar. So help me God, Allah. Wait, are you trying to convert me? Brother ask a very good question. So what are my conclusions after all this? Well, first I determined that pouring CO2 gas into a bottle is pretty difficult. And also that tasting CO2 by inhaling it through your mouth isn't super effective. I also determined that CO2 gas smells horrendously bad. It has a sharp burning smell that I really wouldn't want to experience again. But really, the most important conclusion I came to at the end of all this is that when it comes to tasting or smelling CO2, I'd rather just stick to Coke. <laughs>